Are you looking to optimize your health? Are you looking to get the best supplements at the lowest price? For high quality supplements and to talk to someone about what supplements are best for you, go to takeyoursupplements.com and one of our fantastic true health coaches will help you pick out the right supplements for you that are the highest quality and the best price. That's takeyoursupplements.com. Takeyoursupplements.com. That's takeyoursupplements.com. Be sure to ask about free shipping and our awesome referral program. Welcome to the Learn True Health Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley James. This is episode 131. We are certainly in for a treat today. But before I introduce our wonderful guest, I have to first acknowledge that on Mother's Day, 14 and a half months into this podcast, so this podcast is only 14 and a half months old, we surpassed a million downloads. So a big cheer to all of you, the listeners who have been sharing the podcast and, and listening, all of us combined equaled over a million downloads and it's just wonderful to see that because it's such a a true testament to the fact that we so desperately need this information out there we need to learn from experts like Dana Lavoie who's here today to teach us about menopause now I know a lot of my listeners aren't in the menopause um uh, the age where they should be concerned about menopause but even if you're in your 30s or 20s or 40s Uh, or maybe you're past menopause, I highly recommend listening to Dana today because what she's going to teach uh, is is sort of universal and it's very interesting. um, It's very interesting to understand the difference between what you would go through if you went to an MD having menopausal symptoms and what you experience going to someone who practices this ancient art that has been helping people. I call it an art, but it's really a science and a, a healing science that's been helping people for thousands and thousands of years to balance their body. And also Dana's going to be teaching about foods to eat to balance our body, foods to eat for weight loss, how to um, increase our metabolism in a healthy way for weight loss, all kinds of wonderful things that Dana is going to be teaching. If you have someone in your life who's premenopausal or going through menopause, please share this episode with them today. It makes such a big difference. I remember my mom going through menopause and she, I could not believe it. I was so proud of her. For five years, she only saw an acupuncturist, a a traditional Chinese doctor, and uh, was cooking the herbs on the stove every day and drinking it. And she managed to 100% not have any symptoms. I never saw her go through hot flashes. She absolutely, it it was like she never went through menopause. And it was absolutely amazing to watch that natural medicine could give her so much relief and um, make it so that she didn't have any symptoms. And this is what natural medicine does. When we're truly healthy, we don't have to have symptoms, right? So Dana, I'm so excited for you to be here today. And I'm excited for my listeners to share this with those who might be going through menopause and not want to have the hot flashes or, or be really sick and tired of not being able to lose that weight that they've gained. Because as we know, hormones do play a role in um, either inhibiting weight, lo- inhibit- inhibiting weight loss or in creating weight gain. What's up with that, right? So thank you so much for coming to the show and, uh, and sharing all your wonderful information. Hey, Ashley, I am so excited to be here. I love listening to your podcast. It's always every single episode. I I get something amazing out of it. Um, And I just love that you're sharing so much great information about natural wellness. So I'm thrilled to be here. Yay. Excellent. (laughs) (laughs) So you you're telling me about you've got so much going on now. We had you on the show before and it was a fantastic episode. And since then, you've had so much that you've been doing. Um, on your website has just really exploded. You have wonderful blog posts. In fact, you did this whole series of of blog posts where you uncover what to do to help the body in a healthy way lose weight, especially when someone is going through menopause or has gone through menopause. Let's start by talking about your the, the the last four blogs that you've done and and why why we should all uh, learn from them. 
Absolutely. So weight loss is a hot issue for women of every age, you know, can be, but especially around menopause, during menopause, after menopause, weight gain can be a part of that. Like it's like, oh, well, I'm not eating anything different. I'm not eating anything more. And all of a sudden I gained all this weight and I can't lose it. I hear that all the time from my menopausal clients. So what's going on with that? Because this can be the kind of thing, it's like the first thing you wake up thinking about in the morning, you know, it can really be bothersome. It can be depressing. Um, and so Weight loss can be very tied to hormones and hormonal changes. During menopause, your hormone levels are changing. And if you're really, really healthy, the body is able to keep your hormones in balance, in balance with each other while they change. And then your metabolism stays good. You don't have a lot of symptoms of any kind. But when your hormones are changing quickly, like they do during menopause, if your body can't quite keep up with keeping them all in balance, because, you know, it's like the difference between, you know, juggling three balls and juggling five balls while walking down an escalator in a high wind. You know, it's like, you know, playing a video game at a way higher level for your body to try to keep your hormones in balance with each other while they're changing really quickly during menopause is what happens. And so some of those balls can go flying. You know, you can lose one or two of them. And then things start to get out of balance in your body. Your hormones start to get out of balance and you can then get any of the common menopausal symptoms, um, including weight gain. So what I like to do is help to give the body what it needs to get those hormones back in balance naturally, because your body was designed to be able to do that. And when that happens, your metabolism comes up and weight, you know, you naturally, body naturally finds its most healthy weight. But that being said, there's a lot we can do specifically to look at why diets fail, what makes up a diet that works, and how to lose weight without getting in, caught in any of the traps that so often come along with trying to lose weight that actually prevent you from losing weight. So that was what I covered um, in this series of blog posts, and I'd love to share some of the highlights with you guys. Ooh, yes, excellent. Now, before you go into the, um, let's do that for sure, I want you to just, for our listeners who didn't hear you the first time on our show, could you uh, share your your background and, and what you offer as a professional healer? Absolutely. Uh, so I am a licensed acupuncturist and herbalist. I've been practicing for about 14 years. I specialize in women's health and menopause and in tonic herbs, which are adaptogenic herbs. So it's a, a subset of herbalism that I specialize in. Um, and I worked one on one with clients, you know, full time in my practice for a long time. And I saw so many menopausal women that benefited so much from Chinese medicine. Um, um, and who came to me so desperate because they were not getting the help they needed anywhere else. They were not finding relief and they didn't know that there was really relief available. So I just decided that this was a population who was underserved and I decided to try and share some of what helped my client with a larger audience, which is why I am doing more working with people long distance and online education and blogging and things like that. Wonderful. Now, do you still see um, patients locally? I do. I am in my local office one and a half days per week still uh, doing acupuncture and one-on-one -on -one consultations. Yeah. So I, I couldn't stop completely. I love it too much. Now, you're in, <laughs> are you in Portland? I'm in Eugene. 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 I know that. <laughs> Yeah, Eugene, Eugene Oregon. Oregon. Okay, great. Yeah, awesome. That's fantastic. So, any local listeners, you should definitely go knock on uh, on the door and say, "Hey, let's let's do this. Yeah, let's do some acupuncture. Let's do some herbs." Because uh, you you don't have to have menopause to gain to gain benefits, uh, but you do specialize in that. Now, you you also specialize in women, women's health at any uh, age, right? I do. Yeah, right from you know, starting your period through fertility and pregnancy and menopause and then beyond. I, yeah, all stages. Wonderful. But today we're going to talk about menopause. However, you've got all these wonderful tools in your tool belt. So you are one of those guests. I just want to keep having back on to talk about all, <laughs> all these great things. Now let's dive into those fantastic blog posts that you really put a lot of thought into and, and that um, from your 14 plus years of experience in helping women, especially 
especially with weight loss during those hard times like menopause. Um, so let's dive in. Uh, what, what can we learn from the first one? Was it weight loss during menopause with a weight loss lifestyle? Yeah. So the, the, that's a great one. That's the second one. Actually, that's a great one to start with the lifestyle for menopause. Um, and the reason that I put this one in the series is because the truth is that what you eat and your diet is about a lot more than just losing weight. I mean, I have to admit that that's what I really believe, even though when people think diet, a lot of times they think weight loss. Um, and so I think that if you can think of your diet and you can think of what you eat as this opportunity to nourish your body with the delicious and satisfying foods that are also going to give you the building blocks that your body needs to be healthy and to balance hormones. You know, if you can think of diet in this nourishing way, it's supposed to be delicious. It's supposed to be satisfying. And every time you eat, it's an opportunity to give your body something that it really wants. Um, then it becomes more of a lifestyle. You know, you're going to, you're going to eat regularly. You're not going to skip meals. It's not going to be a chore. It's not going to be something inconvenient. It's going to be like, oh, good. I get a chance to do something delicious and amazing at least three times a day, <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, so starting to think of diet a little bit more as a lifestyle um, or like a fun hobby is sort of one of my secret agendas. If I can get people to think of diet more that way than, oh, diet means losing weight and deprivation. Um, um, so I stuck that in there and in that blog post, it's actually a video where I am chatting with a colleague of mine who is also an amazing acupuncturist and herbalist who works a lot with, um, you know, Chinese medicine in food. And we talk a lot about all the things that Chinese medicine brings to diet and how to eat and when to eat and what to eat. Um, so that's really kind of a fun blog post, that video on the second post. Can you give, um, us, um, give us a highlight? Uh, something to that we would learn by watching that video yeah of course so so the woman that i'm chatting with she specializes in something called kanji are you familiar with mm, kanji yes i have to tell yeah. you that i actually crave my body craves kanji when i'm sick Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like Chinese comfort food. It's what you eat when you're sick. It's very easy to digest. It's grains that are cooked for a long time in a large amount of liquid. So it's sort of like a porridge. Um, and Karen has developed this method of cooking kanji in a little mini crock pot. So you turn it on when you go to bed and it's ready when you get up at breakfast time. So it's incredibly fast and easy. Um, and she has these amazing recipes and kanji like packets that you can buy with delicious combinations of things in them. Um, and eating a warm, easy to digest breakfast like this, because one of the biggest tips that runs throughout this four part blog series that I like to share with women, and this is straight from Chinese medicine, is if you're having trouble losing weight, look at how much cold, raw, or frozen food you're eating in your diet. Mm. Um, because that puts out your digestive fire and your digestive fire is your metabolism. So it is decreasing your metabolism and you can gain weight just from eating too much cold, raw and frozen food. You're freaking me out. Okay. I got it. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad my husband doesn't listen to the podcast anymore because he's too busy to, um, because I'm going to totally share something. He eats, uh, frozen blueberries. I mean, it's uh, organic. They're absolutely delicious, but he like will make a meal out of it. He'll just sit there mm -hmm. and eat frozen blueberries. And he was started gaining weight like, mm -hmm. like a lot. And he's like, he's like, I am only eating. He'll eat like a handful of cashews. He'll have like maybe he'll have some like whatever vegetables and meat I like serve him for dinner. But for the most part, or maybe he'll have <laughs> some eggs for breakfast. But for the most part, he his main when his diet consists of frozen blueberries, because he just, you know, he likes to graze, so he'll eat frozen blueberries. So I look at like the calories, I'm like, he's not eating like 4,000 mm -hmm. calories, but he'd start gaining weight. Every time he goes on this blueberry kick, like this frozen blueberry yep. kick, he will start gaining weight. And it's, it's, he's eating frozen food. Yep. 
I have women who come to me, they're like, look, all I'm eating is smoothies made with, you know, frozen fruit and ice, salads, which are raw and cold, and yogurt. They're like, that's all I eat. There's hardly any calories. I am gaining weight. And immediately I'm like, oh, okay, I know exactly what the problem is. I had a client who she had such a healthy diet and lifestyle. She exercised. She did everything right. But she had gained weight during menopause and she just couldn't get much of it to budge. So I sat down with her and I went through her diet with her, like with a fine tooth comb because she was eating so well, but it turned out that she was eating like a full cup of frozen blueberries on her oatmeal every morning. Mm -hmm. So she wasn't even eating a majority of frozen food, but she was eating those every day. And I said, okay, you warm up those blueberries before you put them on your oatmeal. And she said in two weeks, 10 pounds just like, disappeared. You know, she didn't make any other changes. It just melted right off. So for some people, especially, it can make a huge difference. And it's such an easy fix. Now I know that Ayurvedic medicine is not traditional Chinese medicine but in uh, my understanding is in Ayurvedic medicine there's sort of like we have there's different um maybe like physical personalities like the body has its own personality and mm -hmm. for some of the uh doshas uh heat uh, hot food is better and for another dosha the um the constitution of the body is better to eat raw in traditional Chinese medicine do they they also have that understanding that some people would do better on raw foods, whereas other people would do better on, on more warmer uh, foods that would feed the fire. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There are people whose symptoms and problems that they tend to have are primarily due to excess heat that they have inside their body. They have excess conditions, conditions caused by heat. And those people tend to do great on diets that consist of a lot of raw foods, cleansing foods, you know, those types of things, cooling foods, um, because it gets rid of the heat and everything can work better. But for people who their problems are mostly caused by cold, like they don't have enough fire, their body is always struggling to have enough fire. Um, their digestive fire tends to be a weak area. And so if they eat a lot of cold and cleansing food, it takes that little bit of digestive fire that they have and it drains it, you know, it kind of puts it out. And then what happens when you eat is that instead of things being burned and digested cleanly and fully, they get sort of half digested and you get this sludge that hangs around afterwards that your body just can't burn clean. And that accumulates, and it can definitely accumulate as weight gain. We call it phlegm and dampness in Chinese medicine. Now, someone would, because as you're saying this, I'm thinking, um, if I had, uh, if I was in menopause and I had hot flashes, mm -hmm. would that mean I had too much fire or too much heat? Actually, no. Menopause is a really interesting thing. It's a, anyone who studies Chinese medicine learns this, but you can feel hot for two reasons. You've got fire and water energies in your body and you can feel hot because you have too much fire. That makes sense to everyone. You know, you've just got too much fire. So you feel hot all the time. And that is one reason you can feel hot. But the other reason you can feel hot is because you don't have enough water. So if you have equal amounts of fire and water, and then all of a sudden your water disappears, well, now you have a normal amount of fire, but it is raging around uncontrolled because there's not enough water to control that normal amount of fire that you have. Does that make sense? It's hard to explain without a visual. So <laughs> you've got a normal amount of fire, but you don't have enough water to balance it out. So you feel hot. And this is called deficiency fire. It's hot symptoms caused by a water deficiency. And the difference between this and the excess too much fire is the deficiency fire where you feel hot because you don't have enough water tends to come and go in flashes and it tends to be worse at night and it can be accompanied by dryness. So. You can see why with menopause, you get the hot flashes, you get the night sweats, and you tend to get dryness because it is most often caused by declining water. That's so fascinating because the mainstream medical system would say, 
you know, would, would make us think we have too much fire, right? And so, and so we would want to put out the fire, uh, in, right? In a sense, right? Whereas what we want to do, we want to do is balance the water, the water and fire energy within us. And uh, and I, I, I love that. The, I mean, the fact is that you have so much. Um, you have so many testimonials. You have you have so much proof, right? The proof is in is in the results. And, yeah. and you have you have so many results with 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 so many women and uh, in my own personal experience seeing my mom seeing it work and I've had I, I, it's so funny how I've gone into situations with acupuncturists where I was always kind of skeptical and then they always amazed me <laughs> yeah so, that's so the best I, I love it I love it I kind of go I, I go in I like I have to have an open mind because I really do believe in natural medicine but I'm also not I'm not just so such a believer I'm like blinded and will like just believe anything so I have to go in with some level of um you know critical thinking right and and yet every time I've ever worked with an herbalist or acupuncturist I've always walked away with amazing results and, mm -hmm. and so I just love the fact that you know women are really desperate by the time they're having these hot flashes and and they can't sleep and they're having night sweats and they um, they can't, they can't remember, they have so much brain fog. They can't remember, you know, what their name is <laughs> or yep. where their, 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 their glasses are and their glasses are on their head and, and, uh, you know, and then the, then the weight gain, right? And so all these things, and they feel like they are going crazy because on the inside, they feel like they're still 20, um, mentally, but on the, but, but everything else is, is kind of tearing them apart and, and they feel like their body is, um, is their enemy all for the, you know, maybe for the first time they're feeling like they're, they're kind of living in this, this prison, right. where they are going crazy. And, and so to know that natural medicine can, can very quickly have this effect. Now, when you work with women, how fast do they, I know everyone's, everyone's an individual, but how fast do women see results when they, for example, go on, um, an herbal, the, the herbal tonic that you concoct for them? They'll usually start to see results within a couple of weeks, but the first big change usually happens right at three months. And why is that, do you think? You know, it's a cyclical thing. Like when I'm treating women for PMS or anything to do with their periods, I tell them, you know, the third month is where you're going to see the biggest change. But also anytime someone starts a tonic herbal program, they do what's called like a foundation combination of herbs for 99 days. Chinese medicine has this, it's Taoist medicine, actually, it says, you know, you do this for 99 days to kind of cleanse and reset. And then you move on to the next phase, that that's sort of how long it takes for the body to cycle through the first big change. And for for that result to become established so that you're ready to look at the next step. Mm, exciting. I, I like that. I like having that end goal in mind. You know, I'm going to do this for 99 days and um, and just wa watch as the symptoms fall off. And, mm -hmm. then, and then, you know, knowing that um, at the end of 99 days is a cycle and, uh, and to wait to see uh, what happens. Because I think when we don't have that definite like here's here's where we're gonna have a checkpoint mm -hmm. so i think we lose motivation fairly fast and so to put that check checkpoint out um helps us stay on track now you have another blog which is the seven reasons why diets fail during menopause and i think mm -hmm. that, that, that sounds like it'd be the most popular one so why don't <laughs> why don't we jump into that and teach some of the really important points from this uh blog post Absolutely. I feel like if you can avoid these pitfalls, you know, you're going to be in such great shape um, putting together a diet that works. And these are just so common. So the first one, I think one of the biggest ones is you don't want your body to think that you are in starvation mode when you're trying to lose weight, because a lot of times when women think, all right, I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to eat less. I'm going to skip meals or I'm not going to eat breakfast. I'll wait till lunchtime or mid afternoon to start eating. Think how many calories I'm going to save that way. But anytime you either don't eat enough or go too many hours without eating, you know, so like you go, you know, you don't eat till three in the afternoon or you skip breakfast or you skip lunch. So anytime you don't eat enough or go too long without eating, the primitive part of your brain starts to think, hmm, if everything was great, 
we would have had something to eat by now. So something must be wrong. We must be in some kind of emergency, you know, whether it's a drought or a famine or we're running from a tiger or, you know, this is like the primitive part of your brain. It thinks if we're not eating every few hours when we're hungry, something's wrong. And as soon as your brain starts to think something's wrong, we could be in an emergency that your brain chemistry starts to change and your hormones start to change and your metabolism immediately starts to go down. Your brain says, conserve calories, conserve calories. Who knows when we're going to eat again? We could be in a food shortage. We could be in a famine. So metabolism goes down. But the thing is that your desire to eat actually goes up and your cravings for carbohydrates and sugar and quick energy thing goes up. And it's like your um, stress hormones tend to go up as well. So a lot of things happen in your hormones and your brain chemistry that are extremely bad for weight loss when your brain goes into that starvation mode. So that's something you really want to avoid. Now, I like the stats that you have in this blog post. I'm, I'm kind of blown away by them. Dr. Mark Hyman's stats about why diets fail um, do you want to touch on those? Absolutely. So he says that the average person gains 11 pounds for every diet that they go on. And he says uh, when they lose, even worse, when they lose weight, they lose muscle, not fat. And when they gain the weight back, they gain back all fat. So most people, when they go on a diet, they do, they do something that puts themselves into this starvation mode. Um, and they end up feeling desperate. They end up with a lower metabolism. They end up with cravings and they end up not only gaining weight, but um, I have a quote in here from Aviva Ram and she talks about how you can gain the kind of weight that turns into belly fat. And this increases your stress hormones and your sugar cravings even more. So it's a real cycle that you can fall into with your brain chemistry and your hormones working against you. Um, because to me, diet is just, you know, once you fall into that trap, it becomes a pretty uncomfortable place to be. Whereas I find if you can get your hormones and your brain chemistry working with you, you can lose weight without eating less, without being hungry, without feeling deprived. You know, it's amazing what a difference it makes. That is fan like really, really fascinating because I have been on so many diets and that's been my experience is that mm -hmm. I end up always uh, gaining it back and gaining it more and gaining it in, in places that, that are, um, you know, very inconvenient for ho healthy hormones like the, the, ab the abdomen, which... Um, is associated with um, re insulin resistance and um, and um, uh, too much estrogen, right? Yeah, exactly. One thing I thought was fascinating was dietitian Cassie, who's a dietitian that I really like, says that when she have client she has clients who she puts on her program, which is eating six times a day um, and decent sized meals with you know fats and all kinds of good stuff every time. She said if they go on this program regularly and they're not really losing weight and they come to her and say, you know, I feel like maybe I should eat less. I should make my portion size smaller. I should reduce my calories. She'll say, no, I want you to stick with this for six months before you even think about reducing your portion sizes or your calories, total calories, you know, more than what we're already doing, because it can take six months for your metabolism to recover from being in that starvation mode. And because if you can get your metabolism to come up, weight loss is going to be so much easier forever and ever. Very interesting. And that's, yeah. I've, I mean, I've heard it was so weird is that I've heard the opposite, right? I've heard people who say that they should go on mini fasts and skip meals and they lose weight that way. And then and now you're saying that there's um, an efficient way to lose weight where you're actually fully, fully uh, sati satiating the, the body six times a day um, with with very nutrient rich foods, obviously, um, and a very balanced diet. But that uh, giving the body enough time to come down off of that stressed starvation mode um, and then they can lower their 
their uh they can lessen the portions um and then she has success with helping people to um to healthfully permanently lose weight yeah massive success fantastic and is that what you yeah. do in your program do you have people eat uh, meals six times a day or w w what's um what does your program look like my program is to naturally boost your metabolism. And while there are people who do benefit from different kinds of fasting, and I, I that's kind of like a different issue that I'm not going to talk about as much because the Chinese medicine approach to a, to a healthy digestion is to eat regularly. Um, and so that's the approach I go with. I find it works well, especially for certain types of people. Um, and so, yeah, I, it doesn't have to be six times a day. I feel like, uh, if you have issues with regulating your blood sugar and your metabolism, it helps to eat more often. I always say like the bedtime snack is optional, so that brings you down to five times per day. For people who don't have any issues with metabolism or blood sugar, three times a day can be good enough. But for people who do have issues with metabolism and blood sugar regulation, I find that eating five times a day, like a, a certain little healthy snack, it doesn't have to be a lot, about every three hours is extremely helpful in evening out that blood sugar and boosting the metabolism. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, breakfast, a mid-morning snack, lunch, a mid-afternoon snack, dinner, and an optional snack in the evening. Yeah, I find that um, often people go like, oh, I don't need to eat all that much. And then they, they'll skip a meal and then they're starving near mm -hmm. snack time, you know, 3 p.m. or they're going for that, you know, energy crash. And once we're in that starvation mode or that energy mm -hmm. crash mode, then all discipline goes out the window for the closest junk food, right? Because we just yeah. need, it's like uh, all of a sudden our hunger is what's, or we're hangry. <laughs> Exactly. And, uh, and that's when we often overeat. And I'm speaking from personal experience, but that's when, once we're in that low, the, 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 um, once the, on the bell curve that's going down the downward spiral of, of blood sugar, um, cause you know, I think we think we're invincible. And so, um, oh, I'm just too busy to eat or I forget to eat. Right. And then we've skipped a meal, we've skipped a snack. And now we're reaching for something sugary or something that's going to give us quick energy or something that's just convenient. And, uh, and that's where we fall off the bandwagon. Um, or we found ourselves 11 at night eating the, the two portion sizes because um, we're just so starving. And so the sort of that thermostat of the brain that tells us we're full has been um, shut off. <laughs> Exactly. Whereas if you get your vegetables and some protein and a little healthy fat at breakfast and at mid morning and at lunch, I mean, to me, that's what sets you up. It certainly works for me that in the mid afternoon when I would otherwise get tired in the evening when I would otherwise have cravings, you know, if I've eaten that healthy stuff all through the morning and early afternoon, I just feel great all afternoon and evening. And I don't overeat, you know? Yes. And, you know, I just, um, I was trying to think of a really good way of, of I always like to go back to cars. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> because it's, it's we're filling, a, it's like fuel, right? We're putting fuel in the body. Totally. But a lot of people will drive to the tank is empty. And it's not, for most cars, it doesn't hurt the car itself. Um, but we don't drive until the oil is empty. Right. Right. And so if we could correlate um, our our intake of, of food to how much oil we keep in our car, we always top it off, right? If it's down a, a little bit, a quart, we would top it off. We wouldn't go, oh, well, you know, I, I, I have 50% of the oil in the engine. That's good enough, right? It's like, so we know we always top it off. And so e even if we're not hungry, because um, by the time we're hungry, it's sometimes too late. Exactly. It's too late to eat without having a blood sugar spike and a crash afterwards, almost no matter what you eat. Mm -hmm. And and it's insulin. Isn't 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 it insulin's role in in and um, its dance with with sugar that really contributes to weight gain? Well, it's 
definitely one of the thing that hugely contributes to weight gain. And it ties in a lot with um, like the hormone cortisol, your stress hormone. They're pretty closely tied together when they start to get dysregulated. Um, so yes, absolutely. That is, and also inflammation, you know, if your insulin levels are uneven and they're spiking and falling, it increases your stress hormone levels and it increases inflammation in your body, both of which have a lot of detrimental effects. Now from a ch ch traditional Chinese standpoint, the, does this, um, vicious cycle, also lead to a drop off in in water uh, to fire ratio. Absolutely, because in Chinese medicine, your digestive system is that's your it's considered your earth energy, and your digestive system is where you make blood from. And it's where you make your watery essence from as well, um, because blood and watery essence are kind of interchangeable in some ways. So if your digestion is poor, if it's not working well, it's really hard for your body to make blood and watery essence. So you can't replenish or if it, you know, it's getting low and your body's like, hey, we need more of this, but your digestion's not working right. It's really hard for the body to make more of it. And what does watery essence do for us? Well, during menopause, it controls the fire in our body, which is one really important thing, but it also is um, our grounding energy. So watery essence keeps you calm, it keeps you even, it keeps you grounded. Without watery essence, your mood will tend to spike and fly all over the place. Um, but it also actually cools the body and moisturizes the body. So it is the stuff that's like your synovial fluid in your joints um, that lubricates your joints. And it is the moisture. If you think of your muscles kind of like a sponge. They work best when they're moist. When a sponge gets dry, it gets really stiff and your muscles and tendons can get like that in menopause. If you don't have enough watery essence, we get you get what we call dry tendons in Chinese medicine. It can lead to frozen shoulder and carpal tunnel and a lack of flexibility. But your watery essence also is tears because some women will get dry eyes during menopause or dry mouth. So it's your tears and your saliva, which keeps your teeth healthy and your eyes healthy as well. And you're mentioning another feminine body part that uh, becomes dry um, as well. Because I know it's because they'll advertise um, these special lubricants that women um, can can buy when they're going through the the change of life. And uh, and so it's interesting that you said that that the with a, with less moisture energy, right? Um, yep. Then we become our tear ducts, you know, our, our synovial fluid, so our joints, the synovial fluid, our but also our mucous membranes. Oh yeah. Are, are becoming dry, and and that leads to painful intercourse, and um, and probably it, at that point the woman is less likely to even have a sex drive if they're going through all of uh, this imbalance. For sure. And it can also lead even a not uncommon pattern is recurrent urinary tract infections, which is really, really unpleasant because if your vaginal tissues are dry, they are less plump. And so the opening becomes bigger. You know, if they're plump, it kind of seals up the opening. So it's hard for bacteria to get in. So uh, vaginal dryness can lead to recurrent urinary tract infections, like one after another. You know, I have these women who they go on antibiotics, they get rid of it, they get another one. They go on antibiotics, they get rid of it, they have another one. Um, and it's w nourishing the watery essence is wonderfully helpful for breaking that cycle, as well as just feeling a whole lot better. Um, yeah. Wow. What can we do to nourish the watery essence? Or should should um should people talk to you first before they implement nourishing the watery essence? Because maybe maybe they don't need it, and then it's too much. Or can can everyone who feels that they have all the symptoms you just mentioned uh, follow some basic steps to nourish the watery essence and and start to feel good uh, positive results? 
There is a lot you can do to nourish the watery essence that is good for pretty much everyone. That even if you have enough watery essence, it's like not really going to hurt to have a little bit more kind of thing. Um, and it's one of the best things also that you can do to prepare for an easier menopause is to make sure that your blood and your watery essence are nice and full going in. So it's it's great stuff to do. Um, in general, having a high enough percentage of fruits and vegetables in your diet helps with that because those foods in general are cooling and moistening. So, uh, you know, just eating uh, fruits and vegetables often enough and as a large enough percentage of your diet helps. Healthy fats, including healthy fats in your diet, those are important building blocks for hormones and other, some of those fluids. There are specific foods like pears are particularly nourishing for your watery essence. Seeds are nourishing for your watery essence, like sesame seeds. Black beans are good for your watery essence. Um, and when you get closer to menopause, there are things like estrogen rich foods. There are certain estrogen rich foods which are safe, really safe. Um, and I have actually a blog post called Estrogen Rich Foods Done Right. And some of those would be like flax seeds, a couple of tablespoons of flax seeds a day um, are really wonderful. And even things like certain types of soy, like organic, non-GMO fermented soy, like miso, natto, and tempeh are really specific for nourishing the watery essence. Um, but yeah, there's enough like the flax seeds, the pears, a high enough percentage of fruits and vegetables, um, some seeds, and uh, that's healthy fats are going to be a, a great basis. And, you know, making sure you're not iron deficient as well. If you tend to be anemic, making sure that you're getting enough foods that are rich in iron in your diet, even like organ meats or red meat or other foods that are rich in iron is going to help too. Yes, we don't eat enough organ meats. <laughs> Most of us really don't. <laughs> right. And and they are so rich in those um in those minerals and those in those metals that um, that are that are yeah. healthy for us. Excellent. So, um I love that. I love that. And I, I, I love that you uh, pointed out flaxseed because I, I, I think it's sort of like this underutilized superfood. <laughs> flax seeds are amazing for women when they start to get anywhere near menopause. Yeah, they are really powerful. They have the highest percentage of this stuff called lignans of like any food available. They're, they're fantastic. Sesame seeds are pretty good, too, though. My um my so growing up my um my mom took us to Dr. Diadamo and uh -huh. he was our naturopath um and uh, this is uh, James Diadamo the the father right of the yeah uh, original creator of the Eat Right for Your Blood Type and so I got to actually before he ever published that book before he gave it a name um I got to experience the Eat Right for Your Blood Type like 1.0 diet which was really cool but going to him growing up um we ha he had us on this kick where um. My mom would, uh, we had a coffee grinder just for flax seeds. Mm -hmm. And she'd fill it up every morning and grind them and, yep. and then put them in the blender. We had a, we had a, like the original Vitamix, which yep. I, so, I get like health geek points for that. And totally. I love it. I love it. And, um, and then fresh squeezed, uh, he had this, this, this was like his, um, little thing that you did every morning, fresh squeezed, um, uh grapefruit juice so yeah his his mysterious protein powder which had all kinds of stuff in it who knows uh no sugar in it um the only good tasting thing was the grapefruit juice and <laughs> uh, and flaxseed and so she'd blend that and the first thing in the morning like we're just waking up and she would be already she was already up and she had so much energy i mean you know following a nature path right she had so much energy she, she was had more energy than i did when i was you know five right she or seven she would jump out of bed make this and then hand it to all of us my dad and herself and me and uh, if we didn't drink it fast enough it turned to gel I actually preferred it that way uh because yeah. of the black seed and uh and we would drink this every morning uh and then go about you know getting ready for work or school and uh, and then we'd sit down for breakfast um like a half an hour later and this was sort of the constitutional you know a little bit of protein and, and lots of flaxseed and a little bit of yeah. the, the good stuff from grapefruit and um you know i was too young to question it or know what life was like without it because i was just too young but we did it my entire childhood and um, never had a problem with constipation. 
Yeah. Never had a problem in any direction. It was, I always had perfect, you know, perfect digestion, perfect, you know, everything. As I said, it's great for your digestion. It's great for your brain. That is so fantastic. I love that. It's amazing how once you get in the habit of it, there are so many, like I'm all about being healthy, but making it convenient. Um, you know, like, like organ meats is an example. You know, when I visit Portland, there's this like food cart you can go to that has these amazing little meatloafs made with organ meats that's all clean and grass fed. And I'm like, great, but do I make that at home? I don't, I, I just take some liver powder, you know, in a capsule. Like I, I love finding ways to make being really healthy, quick and easy. And you can throw a few things in the blender in the morning and the new coffee grinder works great for flax seeds, but the new Vitamix, well, you can put whole flax seeds in there too. Yes. You know, in 20 seconds, you can get so many superfoods into your diet and I'll often use a morning smoothie. Like I'll make extra and I will have a little cup of it as a mid morning snack and a little cup of it as a mid afternoon snack. And there's all my snacks for the day in that one smoothie. And I got my protein in there, my healthy fats, my superfoods, my fruits and vegetables. Um, you know, it's amazing how quick and convenient it can be to be this healthy if you're a little bit smart and strategic about it. And I love that you had that. I wish I had that growing up. That is amazing. You know, it's so funny because I had this you know, experience of, I was really young when I was ill, right? Um, only because I was yeah. eating the wrong foods. I was, we were eating the standard you know, American slash Canadian diet, um, up until I was six and, um, and I was, you know, drinking chocolate milk at, at, you know, school every day and eating Cheerios and, you know, all the things you think are healthy. And I was just always phlegm in the throat, always burning eyes. Mm -hmm. I always sort of, sort of always got a um, perpetual sore throat and yeah. it was kind of just like dull. I felt dull. Like my energy felt dull. And then just completely 180 going to a naturopath getting on supplements getting all only eating whole foods um and and my life changed in an instant my health changed and for my entire childhood i was extremely healthy and then uh and then and then rebelling against it not knowing any better right and then spending yeah. the rest of my adult life trying to get back to where i was when yeah. i was a kid because i mean we if you go down the wrong path it takes it takes so much longer to heal from the damage right it's it's pretty it's pretty amazing um, but at the same time, it's, it, it, it can heal in leaps and bounds. And I've seen both. I, I want to yeah. know before we move on, I'm sure our listeners are curious. Um, I know you skimmed over sort of what's in your, in your smoothie, but can you tell us like how to make your smoothie? Sure. And you know, it's not always the same. Um, but like I, um, I do have a blog post. It's called, I think it's called natural, my top five natural remedies for menopause. And I have like a chart of the different things you can put in your smoothie, like build a smoothie. But the things that my smoothie always has in it are some fruit because it makes it taste good. Whether it's a little bit of banana, often some blueberries or strawberries or cherries. So some fruit, um, and always vegetables. And usually for me, what that means, because it's quick and easy, is uh, in Eugene, I'm lucky I have access to usually really, really good local salad. You know, you can go to the health food store and they've got these bulk bins of locally grown mixed greens, baby greens, all different kinds of amazing greens. They're pre-washed. And so I just take a nice handful of that and I put it in the blender because it's different every week. It's got different greens in there. And I love that. But you can use choose from a wide variety of vegetables. But so I put in fruit, I put in vegetables, I put in some kind of liquid because that makes the blender go round. Uh, sometimes I will use water. Sometimes um, I will use coconut water. Sometimes I will use uh, nut milk. Sometimes I will use uh, tea like actual herbal tea. And very often, whatever liquid I'm using, I'll warm it up. I'll put it on the stove and make it hot so that my smoothie comes out kind of warm. That's one of my little tricks that I like to do. So fruit, vegetables, liquid, that's the base. And then I throw in all kinds of things from there, like superfoods and herbs. Um, and I'll often put in healthy fats. So whether it's flax seeds, uh, chia seeds, sesame seeds, Brazil nuts, almonds, some kind of nuts or seeds. I'll often also put in a spoonful of coconut oil for more healthy fats. Uh, sometimes I'll even put in an egg yolk. Um, and so we've got 
fats, we've got seeds, we've got fruits, vegetables, liquid, uh, and then I'll just go from there. <laughs> um, sometimes if um, I will put in herbs, like I'll take my capsules of adaptogenic herbs and I'll just throw them right in the blender. That works really well and makes it really easy. Sometimes I'll put in my herbs for the entire day, drink half of it in the morning, half of it later in the day, and that's it. That's all my herbs for the whole day. Um, I am often known to put in uh, raw cacao powder because I love chocolate and it's just so delicious. And I almost always put in a pinch of salt because I find it brings out all the flavors. Sometimes I'll use uh, some sweet fruit drops, which is like a stevia alternative uh, or something like a date if I want it to be really sweet. I will often sprinkle in some cinnamon and either ginger or a little chunk of ginger root because I find including these kind of like spicy spices in my diet is just really nice for your digestion and your metabolism. So I've gotten in the habit of adding cinnamon cinnamon and ginger and other spices to my diet more often. Um, and they are a little bit warming, cinnamon and ginger. So if you're having tons of hot flashes, I would go for fresh ginger, not dried ginger. And um, just be careful of the amount of cinnamon. Um, and that's that, that's getting pretty good on the smoothie there. You know, like I said, it varies. Sometimes I'll put in a slice of avocado or chia seeds if I want it to come out really thick and puddingy. Um, oh, and I've been making homemade yogurt lately that ferments for a full 24 hours. And um, sometimes I'll put in a little bit of that because it makes it so creamy. Oh, and protein powder. I like a lot of protein. So I will very often put some protein powder in there as well. What's, um, first of all, your yogurt that you're making from home, which I think is brilliant. Is this um, cow or goat or what, what kind of uh, yogurt is this? You know, I do uh, pretty well with dairy. So I have been getting, there's this milk I can get. It's from a local farm where all the cows are grass fed and they're all Jersey cows. So the the milk is really rich in fats and I just love it. So I have been using that. <laughs> That's so wonderful. Is it, is it so raw, good. raw? Do you get raw dairy? It's not, it's, it's still hard to get that around here. You have to like know a farmer. You, they can't sell it in the stores, the raw milk. Right. So it's not, but it's not homogenized and it's processed at the lowest heat possible. Got it. Yeah. Raw can be difficult to get. I mean, here mm -hmm. in Seattle, you can almost any farmer's market. I've seen someone selling raw milk, um, mm -hmm. but it's best to uh, befriend the farmer and, and get to know that, that, um, that it, you know you know where your raw milk is coming from is the is the best thing to do yep. um, if you're going to get it i know i know uh, actually i'm friends with a farmer in um, montana i believe she's in montana and um, and she she's in the same um, she's involved in in the same supplement um, uh, company that i that i i love yep. and uh, and she uh, feeds her cows minerals, um, very healthy, m organic, you know, organically sourced minerals, and uh, and then and then oh, totally, you know, illegally, right? Um, mm -hmm. will give the um, raw milk. She only does it for herself. She didn't like create. She has like 15 cows. It's just it's more for her family and for her community. But she'll she'll give raw milk to people, and they've had healings. Um, where oh they, yeah, they've completely healed from things because it's minerally rich, yep. raw, full full fat. Like it's just a regular, you know, just came out of the cow and then you drank it. And she's had people who have have had major issues heal because they're getting actual minerally rich, um, no no chemicals and all the fats. And so it's just it's phenomenal when you when you can get get it from straight from the source. Um, but some people can't handle a dairy, and uh, but I love the culture. Exactly, I've been coming really, really, really um, um, a big fan of uh, culturing and fermenting our own foods. You know, so many guests have have come on the show sharing that uh, what's been a big part of healing is helping their helping themselves and also helping their their clients to increase the amount of fermented foods they're eating. Um, mm -hmm. because the more biodiversity of, of the healthy gut biome that we create, the better. And uh, so the fact that you, you do your own fermenting yogurt is, that's pretty cool. 
And you can make yogurt from coconut milk or, you know, non-dairy yogurt as well, pretty much the same way. Um, and I also forgot to mention that I will very often put a scoop of, I have like a green superfood and I have a fruit powder, like a green powder and a fruit powder. I often put those into, um, in my smoothie. <laughs> I forgot to mention those, that's, that's but yeah, awesome. the, the yogurt's great. And your protein powder, what, um, do you, do you sell any brands that you really believe in or do you recommend any brands that you really believe in? There is a brand of protein powder. My beef with beef, my thing that I often don't like about protein powder is they put all this flavoring and sweetening in it, even the really, really natural kinds, even if it's just stevia and natural flavors. For me, it's often like an overwhelming flavor or sweetness. Um, but I sometimes use a pea protein. More often, I have a whey protein that I really love. Uh, it is called Vital Whey. And um, the place that I get it for people who work with me in my herbal program, they get access to the place where I get most of my supplements from and they sell it there. But it's like a non denatured, minimally processed whey protein with nothing added from grass fed cows. Oh. And I love it. Yeah. That's and. Um, great. And the pea, the pea protein, I find I do okay with as well. Um, I thought about trying one of these new hydrolyzed beef proteins, but um, I haven't done that yet. I know. I often, I've seen it on yeah. the shelves, and I'm kind of like, um. It yeah, looks I know. I'm waiting for people to start telling me it's great. <laughs> I know people are saying, you know, you can get these ones like from Sweden and they're really clean. Um, it's hard to find one without, like I said, the flavorings and the sweeteners in there, though. So mostly, eh, mostly I stick with the, the pee in the way. <laughs> Got it. Now, you mentioned your herbal program. I've been really excited to talk about it. I was so thrilled when you, um, before we hit record, when you told me about it. So let's tell our listeners, because it's phenomenal. And if I was, you know, 49 years old, I'd be jumping on the bandwagon with you right now. Um, so what's this, uh, what's this herbal program that you've launched? Well, I have been working with women one-on-one -on -one with herbs for years and years. And I noticed that, the ones who get the really big benefits are the ones who take the herbs regularly. You know, after three months, six months, a year, two years, their health has transformed. And they're not just dealing with the same, you know, they're not just managing the same chronic conditions year after year. They're really changing their health. And so I thought to myself, how can I get more of my clients to get these kinds of results? Because um, I have people who come and, you know, they buy a bottle of herbs and, you know, maybe a hundred capsules and, you know, three or four months later, they buy another bottle. Um, whereas, you know, taking them regularly, it's more like you need two bottles a month, you know, something like that. And I thought, how can I kind of structure things so that people will be more excited about taking their herbs more regularly? So I created a program and originally it was just for my local clients. Um, and it's a, a monthly delivery. It's sort of like an auto ship thing where we work together one on one to figure out the best herbal combination and then the best dose, something that works for your symptoms, that works for your long term health goals and that works for your budget. And then it gets delivered every month. And, you know, you're supposed to have used up everything that was in last month's box when next month's box comes. Um, and then we reevaluate after three months. So that's the way the program was set up. And then what I did is I decided to expand it for menopausal clients because that's what I specialize in. And I came up with 16 different herbal combinations specifically for menopause because in Chinese medicine, menopause is not a one size fits all kind of thing. So I came up with 16 different combinations and uh, to join the program, we start with a one on one consultation where we talk about your menopausal symptoms, other things that are going on in your health and your long term health goals and match you up with one of these combinations. Occasionally, we decide you need something custom, but usually one of them will cover. And I have ones that are for preparing for menopause and I have some that are for kind of when you're out the other side as well. So it covers the whole range. Um, and then you get the herbs delivered once a month for three months. And then we have another consultation. I love it. I love it because my mom, like I said, five years at daily, she was taking mm -hmm. her, her, she was cooking her, uh, her herbs and, uh, and drinking them and they, they 
were such a life changer. So um, I like that idea of that accountability and the knowing that it, you you have it every month. You know, if you just go to someone um, for an appointment, um, there's no you haven't put anything in your future. You know, you're not like expecting to go back and follow up. And but if you've enrolled in a program, you know what to expect. You're like, okay, I'm I have we have this three month, three months with us and this is what we're going to do together. And, you know, and so, so it, you put in your mind the idea of, of what you're going to be doing over the next three months. And then you know that you have, um, that they, that, that they have you to fall back on as they sort of navigate their symptoms. And, um, so I, I just, I love the idea of, of this program. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff built into it that I think is going to help. There's like a weekly Q&A with me. There's a, a resource library of, you know, all kinds of frequently asked questions, how to take your herbs, you know, videos and um, lots of stuff like that to kind of help make it easier and help you understand what's going on more. Excellent. Yeah. And, and then what I also loved, because we did um, talk about it, because um, I was really curious, um, we don't need to talk about it on the air. They can they can contact you to find out more, but it's really, really affordable. Like it's actually less expensive than I've ever than what I've ever paid for any going to any acupuncturist. So um, yeah. it's very affordable. So because a lot of times that's the first thing someone says is, oh, this sounds so good. It must be so expensive. Yeah. And, and the fact is, is that you because it's um because it's on online, you don't have to pay for that overhead. You know, you don't have to pay for a space. I'm imagining you're really just passing those savings on. I'm sure you could charge so much more for this mm -hmm. the results they get, but I love that you really are making it so that it's accessible to every woman who is going through menopausal symptoms or, and, and you know, maybe just about to enter it and wants to um, do it in a healthy way. So um, because of course, you know, insurance doesn't pay for this, um, but, but, you, 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 I mean, this is like the cost of a copay. It's like really affordable. Yeah. So it's, it's wonderful that you, you're doing that. And um, cool. I just love it. And I, I hope that those who go through your program have such great success that they tell all their friends that it becomes this wonderful referral business um, because of how affordable and how effective it is. Now, I know you have another program that I was really excited about, and that is um, the Menopause Basics What to Eat. So can, yep. can you tell us about that? So you've got this, the herbal program is one thing, and then this other program is Menopause Basics, What to Eat. So uh, what's the difference between the two? And tell us more about what it would look like if we went through your What to Eat um, program. So the way I see it, it's great to start by eating a good diet and having a healthy lifestyle. For a lot of women, that alone is going to help their body balance hormones. But if you take that healthy foundation and you put some targeted herbs on top of it, it's amazing how well they work. You know, when you combine the herbs with a healthy diet and lifestyle, you get just incredible results. So those are the pieces that I wanted to make available to people. And I think that eating the right foods is the way to start. Um, so my menopause basics, what to eat course is everything you want to include in your diet to give your body what it needs to balance hormones naturally. And you can do it at any age, but it is targeted for perimenopause, preparing for an easier menopause and going through menopause. And it's not really a diet because I never talk anywhere in the course about what not to eat. That is a separate thing. This is just about what to include in your diet, um, what to eat, when to eat, how much of it to eat, and a lot of tips and tricks for how to make it happen. Like if you don't have time to shop or you don't have time to cook or, you know, how to plan ahead, how to take advantage of done for you services, just all kinds of tips and tricks so that almost anybody can get on this plan where they're getting in the building blocks that they need um, often enough. And I happen to love to cook and love to eat and I'm kind of a foodie. So I'm, you know, most with the recipes and the, you know, making it taste good. 
<laughs> but not that. having a lot of time too. So yes, we, that's like the perfect trifecta, right? You know, it's yeah. like healthy, tastes good, and fast, and make it fast. Exactly. So that's, that's wonderful. It's the perfect trifecta. Um, I love that, and I, I love that you, you know, you're like this. This program is all about the. It's like a, the carrot, not the stick. It's all about what to yeah. eat. You know, um, do, you listen. There, that there's another program for what not to eat, but this one's all. Yeah. And that that concept I keep hearing is called uh, crowding out. Uh huh. And you, if you just if you fill someone's plate with all the things to eat, it crowd it starts to crowd out naturally the things that aren't serving them. You also just don't have the same cravings. Like I say, you know, if you want to have the coffee or the, you know, like donut or whatever, fine. But you just you need to have these healthy foods as well. And you need to have them often enough at these times. And by getting that healthy food in your body and giving your body the building blocks it needs, evening out your energy, evening out your blood sugar, evening out your hormones, evening out your mood. It's amazing how your body's not saying, oh my God, I, I really need something right now. <laughs> you think I maybe kind of want something like something sweet or whatever, but it is just not the same. And every other change that you go healthy change that you try to make afterwards becomes so much either, whether it's diet or lifestyle or exercise or even taking supplements regu regularly. So that's where I like to start. And it's addition. You know, there's nothing you can't have. There's nothing that's taken away. So it doesn't trigger any of that, like, deprivation mm, stuff. I love it. I'm sort of, I, I feel like I've been brainwashed by so many diets I've been on. I have to keep catching myself and asking, like, is this true? So, mm -hmm. so um just yesterday we're at the we're at the grocery store and i'm sort of standing in line at the at the you know the checker and i'm thinking to myself i'm really craving chocolate and i have this whole mm -hmm. conversation with myself i'm like okay do i really need it is this what i really want is this is is my body actually craving chocolate or do i feel maybe like i haven't had enough fun today because i often i find that when i crave these foods that are we associate with fun like we, ice cream pizza chocolate you know candy um oftentimes when I, I kind of uh, dive into this and I explore like what's going on with this craving, like on a, in, an emotional, psychological level, is it that my body actually needs nutrients from chocolate or mm -hmm. is that, is that I'm, I'm missing something? Like what am I actually missing? Mm -hmm. And I find that a lot of times um, uh, I'm, I realized that I had a really stressful day and there was no fun in the day. So my, my balance of um, my balance of my uh, having a life <laughs> <laughs> it's totally thrown off, right? Because a lot of times we just think it's food in, food out, uh, and uh, and we don't, or you know, food in, waste out, and we don't um, think that health is so much more that it's joy, that it's love, that we have it's, uh, nurturing relationships, and that when we're mm -hmm. missing one of those things, that it, it it is just as detrimental as missing magnesium, right? And uh, and so I was asking myself, what's going on here? And I, I'm like, what am I missing? What am I missing? And and what I I then um, so now we're in the car because I've, I've, I've like stalled to the point where I'm not buying chocolate. I'm thinking to myself because if I can get out of the grocery store, I'm not buying the right. chocolate. But I'm, I'm, I'm holding an orange because the my grocery store gives free organic um, uh, fruit, a piece of fruit to, to every everyone with a child. Right. So I, I, I grabbed like the world's largest orange. It's like the size of a grapefruit. <laughs> and I have not eaten an orange in years. Like, I mean, I've, I've you know, maybe had a slice of a tangerine because my son is eating it. But all these diets, all these low sugar diets have like brainwashed me to think that fruit or oranges are really high in sugar and really bad for you. And, and so I'm holding this orange and I'm examining my belief system going, wow, I really still have some of that belief system going on because here I am wanting to, I'm, I'm, I'm tr trying to go buy some chocolate, but I wouldn't eat an orange. Mm -hmm. you know, because apparently in my belief system, oranges too much sugar, but chocolate's okay. So I cracked open the orange and the three of us shared it because it was, like I said, huge. Mm -hmm. And um, like a few slices into that, which was the, absolutely the most delicious orange I've ever had, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, my, uh, Duffy said, this actually tastes like an orange that I e ate when I was a kid. Like, it, you know, because some oranges just taste like cardboard and this one actually tastes real. And a few few slices in, my, my craving completely subsided. I was like, there you go. You know, we can get all that. You know, my body was craving on some level, some nutrients or some sugar. And we can get the sugar from healthy fruits. And then our cravings for what we think we're craving, which is ice cream, 
or chocolate subsides because what our body was really wanting was nutrient rich uh, fruit in, in, a, in, a, in a healthy amount. And that happens all the time when your body needs energy, you know, or it needs nutrients, like you're going to tend to crave sugar because that's sort of the quickest source of available energy. So that's kind of how we hear the message. But the message is actually, I need fuel. And that's why if you give your body the right fuel, so it always has what it needs, some of the cravings just don't happen in the same way. And, you know, sometimes cr you really, really feel so hungry and you're really actually just thirsty because you haven't mm -hmm. drunk enough water during the day. That's a big one, too. Mm -hmm. So I'm not about so much resisting cravings as short circuiting them yes, <laughs> before yeah. they happen. Exactly. Yeah, because if if I was eating um, a piece of fruit every day, I would I would be satiating that need for maybe that energy and also that that healthy sugar. Um, yeah. before the, the craving had to kick in. Exactly. Um, now, can you teach us something from your menopause basics, what to eat a uh, course? Sure. Yeah. So um, some of the things that I like, one of the things I like to talk about that it's, it's about what to eat. Like it's about um, getting a high enough percentage of vegetables and fruits in your diet because they are by nature cooling and they are filled with some of the micronutrients that your body needs, especially during menopause. So I talk about, you know, like how much is enough and how to get in that many servings a day. Um, things like making smoothies, all different kinds of menopause friendly smoothies, because that's an easy way to get some extra servings of vegetables and fruit. And I also talk about ways that you can prepare vegetables ahead of time, whether it's a soup or some roasted vegetables or vegetable salads that are literally ready to eat, whether you purchase them already cooked or you cook them once a week. So when you sit down to eat and you look at your plate, you can put vegetables on it, like whatever you're having, you can add vegetables to it in about, you know, five seconds <laughs> because there's always some ready and you get in the habit of including them every time you eat. So different ways to increase the overall percentage of vegetables and fruits in your diet. And another thing I talk about in the course is eating often enough, like how to get in the habit of not skipping meals and having snacks so that you're having something often enough throughout the day. Um, ideas for snacks that include some protein, some healthy fat, and a little carbohydrates, what those look like, and, you know, different ways you can get in the habit, whether it's, you know, tying it to the rear view mirror of your car or setting an alarm or, you know, different ways we can kind of change those habits. So it's like, oops, eight hours just went by and I haven't eaten a bite. How to get out of that habit and that cycle. Wonderful. And do you have a recipe from your Menopause Basics uh, program off the top of your head that you'd like to share with us? Wow. Well, you know, there are, um, let's see, off the top of my head, I have some recipes on my blog even, um, some recipe videos that are pretty fun. Uh, and let's see. So I have one for hot chocolate. It's like a superfood hot chocolate that I really like. Um, and it is milk or nut milk, raw cacao powder, and chaga mushroom powder. Chaga mushroom is a real superfood. It's an adaptogen. It's amazing for the immune system. It happens to be a mild tasting mushroom. It's not nearly as bitter as something like a reishi mushroom. And the medicinal mushrooms like chaga are potentiated by really good quality chocolate like raw cacao. So by having them together, you're actually getting more benefits huh. from the medicinal mushroom by having it with chocolate. And because the chaga is so mild tasting, I find that it can sweeten this with just almond butter, as long as it's not heavily salted or toasted, like raw almond butter is actually quite sweet and it makes it thick and creamy. So I'll take the nut milk and the I'll just throw in the cacao powder and the chaga mushroom powder um, and the almond butter. I'll, I'll heat up the milk. I'll put everything in the blender. I'll add a little splash of vanilla, a tiny pinch of salt. You can put in a little bit of sweetener if you like, like maple syrup or stevia or sweet fruit drops are part of a date. And then I throw the whole thing in the Vitamix for just a few moments and it comes out so thick and creamy and so satisfying. 
plus you're getting energy, you know, from the cacao, um, you're getting so satisfied by the chocolate. Um, and you can also add an herb called shawu if you want. It happens to, it's rich and dark. It's a real yin tonic. It's like black and rich and sweet and heavy. That goes really nicely in there too. And it's especially good for building up that watery essence. Um, and I just, you know, I have that. It's like, oh, who needs coffee? <laughs> you know? Wow. That sounds amazing. <laughs> Amazing, amazing. Because yeah. who doesn't love um, nurturing hot chocolate? The chaga mushroom. I, I, I've heard or I've read that it's also helpful for weight loss. Yeah, and I had someone come in um, to just the other day and say that they had been at the local, you know, like health food store with the giant supplement section and the person who knew a lot about that stuff and had recommended it like instead of turmeric as the number one that they thing that they take as a natural anti-inflammatory. Oh, wow. So chaga mushroom has a lot of benefits. It is a true adaptogen and a true superfood. Yeah. And I love that you can do it with, with any nut milk or, or with regular milk. Um, when, mm -hmm. when you say milk, so let's say someone knows they're not dairy intolerant, mm -hmm. um, do you, what kind of milk do you recommend, like whole milk? If they're good with milk, they're not dairy intolerant, I, I highly recommend full fat milk because I feel like those fats are really important in our diet and we tend to cut them out way too often. And I really recommend getting something from pastured cows, cows that were eating grass, mm -hmm. because they've done a lot of studies that show that the fats from grass fed animals are actually quite different. If you look at them in the laboratory, than fats from animals that were raised in a feedlot or fed corn and soy and things like that. So full fat milk from pastured cows. And I heard a really uh, interesting interview recently by a guy who actually went around to different organic dairies all around the country to look at where the cows actually lived and to analyze the milk. And there, um, they found that the really big, more commercialized organic pat dairies that say the milk is organic, the cows are grass fed, that very often there would be like a hundred cows eating grass and 900 cows in the barn, you know? Oh no. Yeah. And that when they analyzed the milk, they didn't have all those beneficial things that you really get from the truly pastured cows. And they were saying that the people who regulate this kind of thing. It's like a, an inspector that the farmer actually hires to say that the oh. cows are eating grass, that it wasn't overly well regulated. I, it was just something I heard on the radio. I was like, whoa. But I mean, I definitely um, would encourage you if you can to get your milk from a local, if there's any kind of local supply or where you can find out something about the farmer or the farm or where the cows actually live. I feel like those smaller operations often are better, not always but often now that might not be possible so you know do as many of these things as you realistically can but definitely full fat organic pastured grass-fed milk and then if you can get it from some kind of a local dairy or a dairy where you you know something about the farm then we're talking about a really healthy food i have heard that there's the statistic is that when it's grass-fed meat and i and i think it was also there was um a range in which it was over six times the amount of omega-3 mm -hmm. to omega-6 ratio. So for those who don't know, omega-3 is the wonderful anti-inflammatory healthy fat that the body needs to create healthy hormones, to make a healthy nervous system, um, to build uh, literally every cell wall in our body. So all these mm -hmm. wonderful things, the body needs omega-3, 4, and then omega-6 the body does need, but in we already get enough of it in our diet and too much right. of it in a, in, it's like too much omega-6 or like the too, the too much fire to not enough water. <laughs> right. Exactly. Too much omega-6 can, can, is, is associated with, um, things like heart disease. Not that it, it not that it, co it might be a uh, causal, but it might be a co correlation with, um, because oftentimes people who have too much omega-6 might also be eating a, uh, fried food, for example. So, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it is, uh, correlated with, um, inflammation and heart disease and not good stuff. So you want lots right. of omega-3 uh, and and uh, lots of omega-3 comes from cows that are grass-fed. So when you look at when you're buying your meat and you go, wow, that's $3 more a pound. Yes, but it also is like 
it's like paying for future disease or paying for future health. <laughs> so I, I struggle yeah. with that. Every time I go to the grocery store, I'm like, man, that organic grass fed meat right there is like a mortgage payment. <laughs> but yep. I don't I also don't want to die at age fifty with a with a heart attack. So um, you know, we just have to we have to balance our priorities and and uh and then I skip, you know, if I if I skip buying the junk food, which I don't obviously buy anymore, but there's the savings. If we stop buying soda and we stop going to man, I save so much money we don't go to Starbucks anymore. And we just if right. you cut out all the junk and then use that money to buy the healthier foods, you'll over time you actually become um, much more happy with with what you're eating. Um, I love that. So I love that um, that hot chocolate and that the fact that you now you use raw um, uh, nut butter in it, not raw yeah. almond butter. Do not yeah. roasted almonds. Well, I you could you could use roasted almonds. I just find that the the raw one is so sweet tasting. Um, so just really whichever tastes better to you, but as long as it's not too salty, <laughs> right. but the raw almonds are quite sweet and they actually sweeten the chocolate quite sufficiently mm, and they I make it creamy. Yeah. And, you know, another little plug for, for dairy milk, if you're not sensitive to it, is that I believe that nuts have a, a kind of a lot of omega-6, just like it, what you were talking about a minute ago. Um, and so nuts are really healthy for you, nuts and seeds, but they're not necessarily what you want to use as your main protein source when it comes to percentages are always going, you know, really overboard with the nuts and the nut milks and stuff. It's good to balance it out with some of those grass fed fats as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, this has been wonderful having you on the show. You know, I just <laughs> want to like keep you on for another hour, but <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> You have so much to share. I'd love for you to close off today's um, interview sharing. Um, speak to the listener who's going through menopause or about to go through menopause. Um, what are some really heavy, what's some really heavy hitting advice that you can give them? I would say that from the biggest perspective, Adopt the Chinese medicine view of menopause, which is that it's called the second spring. And it is actually a real crossroads in terms of your health. It's a time when your future health is a little bit up in the air. And if you get healthy now, if you get some healthy habits in place now and get your health on track now during menopause, it'll tend to stay on that track for the rest of your life. If you go all the way through menopause and out the other side with really poor health habits, it's harder to course correct. So it's actually a time of great opportunity. Um, and it ties into the spiritual level as well. It's often a time when you have just a little bit less responsibility in terms of getting your career going or your kids being really young. It's a really good time to try and prioritize taking time and energy for yourself a little bit more, both for your health and for thinking about what you want to put out into the world in terms of your creativity or your work. So that's why in Chinese medicine, you know, it's the time of a second spring where women often get to focus on themselves just a little bit more. Um, and it's a time of great opportunity for getting your health on the right track. So things like making some healthy diet changes, eating the right foods more often, um, getting enough protein, enough fruits and vegetables, enough healthy fat. And I will say this, if you don't have some kind of stress management practice, this is a great time to start, whether it's five minutes of deep breathing a day or something more involved. Um, and if you're not getting enough sleep, go on a mission to find out what it's going to take to get sleeping better, because that is going to help everything as well. Um, and, uh, you know, if you need help, hit me up and I can help you out. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. The link to everything that Dana Lavoie does is in the show notes of today's podcast. So check out her website, which is Dana Lavoie, L-A-C.com. That's D-A-N-A-L-A-V-O. I E L A C dot com. Uh, or you can go to the show notes of the podcast, alerntruehealth.com, and uh, just click on all the links that I'm going to post there. Uh, now, just a, a little plug for your courses. They're so affordable, but if you go to the website and you put your email in, so there's like an email capture, which actually on any of the blogs, right, you have, mm -hmm. um, you have this great. Um, 
list that people can sign up for um, that gives them. Well, why don't you tell you, you you tell them about the list that they can get? Yeah, it is my metabolism boosting weight loss checklist. And so it just kind of sums up the stuff that I put in the blog posts. And it's totally free. You just put in your email address and, and you can get it. Right. And, so. then, and then you had told me before we hit record, you're like, you know, because uh, I'd asked how much your course was. I expecting to hear that it was hundreds or thousands of dollars. And you told me that um, it is, is like a quarter of what it costs to go to an acupuncturist for, yep. one, for one session, which mm -hmm. I was blown away. And then and then on top of that, you said that if, if someone does sign up for your email list, that they're given um, a discount. Yeah, if they sign up for the email list, I'm going to send you a few emails and um, you are going to get one a few days in that gives you a chance to get the course for like almost 50% off. Um, and the courses, my courses are all also discounted for people in my herbal program. So I'm really trying to get them to as many women as I can. So if they join your herbal program first, then they get the biggest discounts for the rest of the things you do. Yes. Okay, great. Yes. Okay. They has all kinds of discounts and bonuses built into that. Yeah, yeah. a lot of fun stuff. And, and everything you do is, is, is less expensive than going to an acupuncturist. And I'm not saying you shouldn't go to an acupuncturist. I'm just saying to put it in perspective, um, you're, you're gaining access to a, a very experienced herbalist and um, acupuncturist uh, for far less of what it would cost to go to one. So um, I'm, I'm thrilled that you're offering this program and I hope that my listeners who are going through menopause take you up on it because you don't have to suffer. You don't have to have all the symptoms you're going through. Which exactly. Is so exciting. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Excellent. And listeners who go through Dana Lavoie's programs and have great success, please come share it. Come to the Facebook group. L just search Learn True Health in Facebook. You'll find our group or go to learntruehealth.com slash group. That'll redirect you to our Facebook group. And uh, come share. Our community is growing there and you can chat. You can ask questions and chat about any episode you've listened to, including this one, or come back and share that Dana has had a positive impact in your life. I always love hearing that. It's been wonderful. Wonderful having you on the show, Dana. I'd love to have you back. You've got, um, you just have so much information, and um, you help so many women. So it's it's really important that we that we don't lose hope. And I and I love what you had said uh, earlier that um, to please adapt the uh, Chinese medicine understanding of menopause. It's almost like this, like you said, the second spring. It's like a new rebirth. It, mm -hmm. it, instead of the if you look at the allopathic MD pharmaceutical based medical systems approach to menopause approach to like women's health in general, it's like, we're, mm -hmm. we, we are broken. Like going through, mm -hmm. going through pregnancy, I kept, I, I kept being told by practitioners, they're like, well, you're, you know, just know that you're not sick, right? Like you, because, because MDs sort of, or hospitals will treat you like you're sick and you're broken and you're wrong. And, you know, and, 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 and it's somehow kind of weird to be mm -hmm. pregnant. Whereas and so the natural <laughs> practitioners are like, everything's normal and you're healthy and don't don't listen to them. And uh, and same with menopause. We're, we're kind of like taught that, you know, oh, just suck it up. This is natural. Here, take some pills. Right. And yeah. And, and, and if you go to an MD and I know on an individual level, they have a big heart and they want to help. But but MDs and what I hear from so many people is that the MD will say, if you say to them, why am I gaining weight or why am I ache why do I have aches and pains or why do I have, you know, brain brain fog or why am I getting hot flashes the, the, they'll likely say it's just because you're getting older. Right. It's exactly. And and it's because and here's an antidepressant to yeah. help oh. you uh, handle it a little more easily. <laughs> or if you have if you have sleep issues or you, 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 know, you don't have stress management and you, you have sl uh, problems sleeping, they're going to give you a drug. Right. Instead. Right. Of, I mean, and the thing is, is that I'm not. I know I could easily paint the picture that all MDs are bad and wrong and we could t go down that path of a very black and white world. But but really the system is set up so that MDs can't spend enough time with you to really dive into what can help. And they're really um, their education is based in drugs. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you go to one, even though they, they have a great amount of knowledge and education, 
um, they really only have enough time to listen to symptoms and ha- or look at lab work and give you a drug, right? And mm-hmm. so they don't have a lot of time to look at lifestyle, lifestyle and diet changes and the things right. that really do make a big difference. And so going to a, a natural like herbalist, acupuncturist and adding those people, those experts to your team is mm-hmm. so important. And I think taking our, our health in our own hands and empowering ourselves because in menopause is that time when we really need to empower ourselves and take on the idea identity that we are very strong um and that and that this can be like you said the second spring and so i love that that someone could hire you to help the, guide them and hold their hand through this time in their life when maybe medical practitioners are making them feel like they're broken and mm-hmm. you can help them feel like they are like they are whole and perfect and we just need to support the body so the body doesn't express these symptoms anymore And even if you're taking some kind of hormone replacement, it works so much better if you pair it with the right diet and lifestyle and supplements so that your body's hormone regulating mechanism is working. Then you put hormones in and your body can use it. Mm. So it all works together. This has been such a pleasure having you here. I just, I really um, look forward to hearing fantastic feedback. I hope, I hope lots of listeners uh, that that can benefit from this uh, speak with you and contact you. Um, just because I've had my experience of seeing my mom have that such a positive experience, and I know so many women are going through menopause um, and suffering through it when they don't have to. So that's why I'm just so thrilled that you could come here today and share that that you have very affordable ways to help women um, gain health and gain balance so that they can just empower themselves to not only build their health up during menopause, but to really set up the rest of their life. Because that's what like energetically, that's what happens uh, in, like you said, in traditional Chinese medicine during that menopause, it's like this window of opportunity to set our constitution up, to fill up our chi so that we have the rest of our life is in health. It's so true. And that's just something that from Chinese medicine that I want to try to make accessible to women here in the West. It's like a roadmap for menopause. And why weren't we given this, you know? Um, So I'm trying to get it out there. And, uh, you know, I love seeing women having just an easy time with their hormones. So Wonderful. An easy time with their (laughs) hormones. That sounds great. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you, Ashley. It was so fun. Enjoy what you heard today on your episode of the Lured to Health podcast. Did something move you, inspire you? Did you get great information that's going to change your life? Awesome. That's exactly what I'm here to do is to help you gain your health back. Please turn around and share this. If this is something that's helped you in any way, share this with those you love. Love Learn True Health podcast and want to support us? Awesome. You can go to takeyoursupplements.com and you could support us that way. You'll get access to amazing supplements that are just really great quality for a great price. And there'll be someone on the other end of the line to help you pick out your supplements that are right for you. That's takeyoursupplements.com or join our membership learntruehealth.com slash join that's another great way to support our podcast support our movement and you'll be supporting yourself gain more information wonderful videos wonderful trainings and you'll also be able to share those with those you love as well so go to learntruehealth.com slash join want something fun for free go to learntruehealth.com and right there on the front page you'll see where you can get our free cookbook i spent a lot of time making it and it was so much fun it's really delicious healthy recipes and you can also get our seven day doctor course Uh, right there it's seven days of naturopathic videos sent right to your inbox and you can learn from top naturopaths on how to gain health naturally so that's takeyoursupplements.com for one Wonderful supplements, learnyourhealth.com slash join to join our awesome membership, which is only open for a limited time. You can get our free healthy cookbook and you can also get for free seven days of wonderful naturopathic videos sent to you. Just go to learntruehealth.com and you'll see it right there on the front page. Thank you so much for being a listener and thank you for sharing and helping others. Let's spread this information and turn this ripple into a tidal wave.